Alright, happy Sunday everybody. Alright, let's bow our hands in prayer. Lord Father God, I just want to thank you for the Sunday afternoon that we can just pray for your name in spite of anything that's happening. I pray that you just keep us all safe and constantly looking to you in these dark times. Just continue to work in our hearts as we are waiting throughout the weeks. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Ethan, would you with the announcements? First announcement I have for you is we'll continue to have FCs every Wednesday through video call until it's safe to meet in homes again. Um, we encourage you guys to all come out and just to invite at least one VIP. Uh, second announcement I have is we'll continue to have online Sunday service posted on YouTube 11.45 a.m. Uh, next announcement is we'll not have a uh, Good Friday service with THC, but it'll be with KM so you can watch it with your parents online. Um, fasting will be encouraged the day before Thursday 9 p.m. to Friday after service. Um, also, Easter Sunday, we encourage you guys to share the link to the service to at least one VIP. Um, now there are two options for offering. Um, first option is you can save it up and we can collect it once we meet. Second option is you could give it to your parents and they were mailed an envelope um, from church. So yeah. Um, now I'll pass it on to Josh as he reads today's passage and prays over the service. Okay, so today's message will be Matthew 5, verses 27 to 32. So turn your Bibles over there. Okay. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery and with, her, with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her her certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Okay, let's pray. 
Um, dear Lord, I thank you so much for blessing us this wonderful Sunday morning today, Lord. Um, I just ask you that today you just be able to speak through Pastor Danny, Lord, um, with your words, and you just be able to um, apply into our lives even as these weeks go by, Lord. I just ask that you be able to give us strength and courage through these times of um, dark um, struggles, maybe whether it be coronavirus or our own um, daily problems, Lord. Um, I just ask you that even though we're not here physically, Lord, just connect us spiritually and be able to understand this message today, Lord. Thank you so much, and in your name we pray, amen. Hey, y'all, today I'm coming from you live from my living room. Well, not live, but uh, recorded from my from my living room, Danny Studios, from my humble abode. Normally, I go to church, um, and, I'll, and I'll record from there, usually. Uh, but today, I decided to, to stay home and, and record from here. Um, today, we're going to be continuing with our Sermon on the Mount series. Two weeks ago, if you remember, um, I, I spoke on the message entitled, Anger is Heart Murder. And today I'm going to continue with the same idea. The title is, Lust is Heart Adultery. Um, about a month ago, we just finished our True Love Wait series. Um, I don't know if you guys, you guys remember that. Um, oh, by the way, um, if you haven't gotten your rings, right, I'm, I'm holding on to them for you and I will, I will get those to you um, as soon as we're able to meet physically again. Um, but for those of you that do have them, I want you guys to, to put them up on the screen like this. Come on. I'm waiting. Don't flick me off, but put them up. Ooh, I see a lot of you guys don't have it. Um, but I'm really hoping that, you know, those rings would be be a reminder to the commitment that you guys made. Um, and just um, how we need to guard ourselves against lust, especially this message. Um and, I, and so I'll be going off for the True Love Waits sermon series. A lot of this is going to sound familiar to you all, especially that, that last message where I talked about guarding our eyes. But this is really, really important for us, especially because I know how, how, how the brothers in our ministry um, struggle. Being a man, I know. I know how this is. You struggle with lust, and even for some of the sisters as well. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to start by, by letting you guys know a, a story um, uh, of something that happened to me, I was at a bookstore called Romans Bookstore, and I remember I was I was going to line to check out. Um, I, I forgot what I was buying. I think I was buying some um, some some books for, for for devos, some Christian books. But I was going, and I almost tripped over some kid that was sitting on the floor. And I looked down at the kid, and I noticed that he was. I'm looking at a a Sports Illustrated magazine. I don't know if you guys know that magazine, but it wasn't just any Sports Illustrated. It was the swimsuit edition. And I'm pretty familiar with this swimsuit ed edition of Sports Illustrated because when I was a kid, maybe about his age, I actually hid this magazine in my drawer, right? And I know that this magazine leaves very little for the imagination. It's, it's pretty provocative. And so this kid, he looks up after me after after I almost trip over him, and and he realizes that that he just got caught, and he's embarrassed. You know, his his face is turning red, and this is what he what he says to me. Check this out. He says, um, "I was reading it, even though I don't know how to read. I was reading it, even though I don't know how to read." And 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 I remember hearing this, and I thought it was so cute, and I was cracking up, I was laughing to myself, because he's like, "I was reading it, even though I don't know how to read." And, um, you know, I thought it was really cute. His response was really cute. But then I had to take a minute to, to really think about it. And, I, and as I was thinking about it, um, you know, I realized, man, it, it's cute until it's no longer cute. Right? Maybe it's not a laughing matter. And, and, I, was, and I was asking myself the question, was this kid just innocently, like, appreciating, like, God's work of art, like like the work of God's hands and or, or was this kid lusting? You know, they say that that a kid learns to read around six or seven um, years of age, but they start lusting even before then. And it really put things into perspective as I was preparing this message, because oftentimes we think that something is innocent. Right? We see a, a little boy and girl holding hands together and we're like, oh that's so cute. Right? But it's cute and it's innocent until it's no longer cute and innocent. You know, they're, they're going out in junior high school and then they have a, 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 a um, sexual relationship. 
and then one of them leaves the other, leaving them, both of them, scarred for the rest of their lives, right? And we think, we have a tendency to think that as long as we don't act on our temptation, right? Then when we're okay, we're safe. No harm, no foul. But Jesus says, what seems innocent can be very damaging. What, what seems to be innocent can cause a lot of hurt and damage and harm. Now, two weeks ago, I spoke about hatred being heart murder, right? Because the same seed lies within. And so here, Jesus moves from the sixth commandment, you shall not murder, to the, to the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Continuing on with the same theme, continuing on with the, with the same principle. And Jesus says, just as murder begins with anger, so adultery begins with lust, right? That it's the start, but not just that it begins, but that it's, it's, it's equivalent, that it's like the same thing to Jesus because the, the, the sin is not in the action, but the sin is in the heart. You know, in the seventh commandment, adultery was referred to as actual sexual intercourse with another man's wife. I want to read uh, the passage from Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 and 28. And I want you to listen very carefully to Jesus' words. Pay, pay close attention to the words of Jesus here. Matthew 5, verses 27, 28. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Here the word woman can also mean, mean wife. And the word lust is also speaking of, of, of covet. Right? So coveting is, is to strongly desire something that belongs to someone else. right? Or to engage in an activity which is morally wrong. So Jesus here is not only speaking about the seventh commandment, but he is also speaking of the tenth, the, 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 yeah, the tenth commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You know, David in the Bible, he was a great man of God. In fact, the Bible says that he, he was called a man after God's own heart, right? Yet, the sin of lust ensnared him and led him to great destruction and pain in his life and in his family. He loses his child um, on account of this and, and um, his family becomes um, devastated. And it all starts... When from his place, from his palace, um, on a rooftop, he saw Bathsheba bathing, right? You know, David could uh, have looked away. He could have turned a blind eye. He could have resisted the temptation. But instead, he continues to look, right? Instead of looking away, he, he continues to indulge in his lust and imagination. And then he, it leads him to act out on his lust, he sent for her and slept with her. She became pregnant, right? And then he tries to cover up the sin by having her husband, Uriah, killed in war, right? So it doesn't appear that David has any remorse for what he's done, okay? That is until God sends his prophet, Nathan, right? And so Nathan speaks to David in a very, very clever way, right? He tells him the story. He tells him a story of a rich man and a poor man. So Nathan comes to David and he tells him a story between a rich man and a poor man. Right? And he tells him that this rich man had many sheep, but this poor man only had one sheep. He had but one sheep. Right? And it was not only a sheep to this poor man, but it was a, a, a cherished pet. Right? So maybe you guys have pets at home and, and, and that, that pet is, is, is loved and adored. Right? And so this sheep was, 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 was cherished and adored. Um, by this man and by his family, right? By his kids. The sheep ate from his hand and slept in his arms. Then one day, the rich man steals the sheep. He, the rich man comes along, he steals the sheep from the poor man, and he slaughters the sheep and feeds him to guess who came. And then David, he, he, um, he hears his story, and he gets, he gets livid, right? There's this anger just that's brewing up inside of him he gets enraged and he says as surely as the lord lives this man must die he's like yo this guy deserves to die he he, he deserves 
death, right? As his, as his punishment, as the penalty. And the prophet Nathan turns the tables and he says, you are the man. And in that moment, David's heart just breaks, right? And he saw the grievous offense towards God that he had committed. Adultery. Adultery occurs when you are unfaithful in marriage or cause someone else to be unfaithful in marriage. And this can cause great damage. But that does not mean if you're single and the other person is single, you guys are both single, then, then, then you guys get to fool around, that it's okay to mess around. People, don't think since I'm not married, because I'm not married, I can do anything I want with whoever I want to do it with, right? This is talking about any relationship outside of marriage. We see here that, that lust is sin and adultery is bad, but we see something else from this passage, right? We see something else, and that's this. That sin is bad because something God created as good is being twisted, right? And, 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 and harmed and misused into something bad. I shared this already in our, our True Love Wait series, but, but God is not against sexual pleasure in marriage, right? You know, sex was originally God's idea and sex was originally created for good. It's not that God, it's not that Adam and Eve created sex, right? It, they didn't make this up. God wasn't looking at, at them and then he had to like cover his eyes, be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like, like what are they doing, right? Like, whoa, 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 like, 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 what are they doing, right? No. And if God wanted to, he could have actually um, cr created another way. There could have been another way. Right? Man could have sneezed on a woman, like a two, right? Like Adam could have sneezed on Eve and impregnated her, right? And she's with child. But but this this is 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 the process that God had intended. This was his idea to have a sexual relationship, right? The pleasure of physical intimacy and the goodness of all of that was God's idea. Marriage is about this idea where two become one. Or two become one. Remember, you guys, the, the formula that I gave you guys in a TLW series, one plus one equals one. So when we see these high walls, it's because God is guarding what is precious. God's guarding what is precious. Sex is such a beautiful thing, and, and God calls us to protect it from misuse and abuse. God is preserving something that is precious. Honoring marriage, it is a blessing from God within marriage. Life to be born and children to be welcomed, welcomed into the world, it, it's, such, it's such a precious gift, right? In the right context, in the right context. So when God says, do not commit adultery, that command um, it, 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 it is not to limit or to restrict you. It's to protect you, okay? It's not that God is trying to be a joy killer, right? But it's actually to protect you and to free you to experience love at its, its human best. Okay, at its human best. But we see that Jesus ex expands on these walls. He, he makes these walls even higher, right? And, and he makes it seemingly impossible to keep. But we have to understand that this too is out of love. You see, Jesus knew God's heart. And the love that he had for his people. Right? So, so this too, when Jesus um, extends the walls, he expands the walls and, and gives us these, these commands, this too is out of love. It's out of the heart that Jesus knows God has for his people. So lusting after another woman or man um, that is not your husband or wife is adultery and it is wrong. Um, and I want to make this clear that it doesn't mean that you can't think that someone is good looking, that you can't appreciate someone else's looks, right? You can't appreciate someone being beautiful. That's not what it means. You know, I go to the gym and sometimes I'll see a guy and I'll be like, man, that guy, that guy is, he's got a good physique. We don't say it like that, but like the guy's swole, right? He's yoked. He's cut up. He's jacked, right? You know, I appreciate good looking people, okay? Probably because I'm... Um, I'm one myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But 
Um, it's not lust. It's not lust to think someone is good looking or pretty. It's it's totally natural, right? Lust is not to look at someone and find them attractive. But there is a difference. I want to tell you that there is a difference between looking and lusting. And we know this. We know that there is a difference between looking and lusting. Attraction to the opposite gender is natural, right? It's not wrong. In fact, it's normal. But what are you going to do with that thought, right? Um, are you going to just continue to, to look and, and have, have this lingering look, right? And even undress them in our, in, in our, in, in our imagination, right? And, and have the, the, these lustful thoughts and use them as fuel for our sexual imagination, right? Because that is when you cross over from, from looking to lusting, it is when you begin to address a person with your eyes and begin fantasizing about them in your imagination that it becomes wrong. Wanting to have sex with her or him, right? Lust is sexual desire minus honor and holiness. It is when you dishonor the person and dishonor God that the appreciation of attraction has become lust. Seeing a person as a sexual object for your own satisfaction. And that is why, that is why pornography is so destroying, you guys. It's so destroying to the heart. Because it turns a person into an, an object of someone's craving, right? You know, males, they objectify, objectify women as some kind of um, object, sexualized object. You know, there's a, a quote. And it goes something like this. So a thought, reap an action. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a destiny. It all starts with a thought. Brothers, I want to tell you that you need to stop looking at women as sexual objects. Sisters, I really want to warn you to, to, to be careful in, 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 in how you dress. Dress modestly. Modestly. Right? Have modesty and respect for yourself. But also do it so that you don't stumble others, so you don't stumble men. You know, married women back then, they had to wear head coverings. They, they, they covered their whole heads. You know, they, they weren't able to show any skin. Um, if they were married to, to, to prevent other men um, from, from, from being tempted and, and from other men to, to, to being stumbled, right? And this woman would be killed if she was caught in adultery, right? But, but it sucks because nothing would happen um, to the man. Um, women in general, they had to dress mo modestly, right? But especially married women. Um, it's nothing like you, you see today with, with um, leggings and, and some of these other clothes. You guys, I, I'll, sometimes, if I can be honest, I go to the gym and I'm just like, what is that, that girl wearing? It's, it's just, it's just, it's crazy, right? But regardless of how the woman dresses, it doesn't matter. I will say this, okay? Um, because, brothers, guys, it, it's up to us to, to look away, right? It's up to us to look away. Stop blaming others for your sins. Jesus here lays the responsibility on the male and expects male to be able to control their desires, right? He's like, hey, control your own desires. He says the problem is the male's desires here. Right? How then does Jesus sabotage inappropriate desires? Look at what he says. He says, eliminate what tempts the gaze that prompts lust. He says, gouge your eye out. Cut off your hand. We see this in verses 29 and 30. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. So what did he say that you need to do with your eye that causes you to sin? What do you do with your hand when it causes you to sin? Right? He says, with your eye, you gouge it out. With your hand, you cut it off. Now, is Jesus being literal here? Um, no. No. He's not. He's using a, a, a dramatic figure of speech. Very extreme. 
right? But this is how much Jesus is trying to emphasize the point, right? You know, I remember one time I was playing ball with some friends and I got hurt. I got injured. Um, I hurt my leg. And afterwards, I remember limping to my car. And I remember thinking to, self, to myself that, that we have a tendency to, to take um, our body parts for granted, right? Because I, I was walking to my car and it was really difficult. And I'm like, man, um, I, I take my body parts for granted. But Jesus is saying here, do not take the sin of your heart for granted. That you need to take your sin seriously, right? Are we to make ourselves literally lame and crippled and blind? You know, if that was the case, the only thing left in me would be my big toe. That would be the only part of my body remaining, right? But Jesus is saying that it's about the heart. Everyone say heart. He's saying it's about the heart, right? So the first thing we would need to do is to tear out our heart when we sin, right? Because the problem is in the heart. We all know that you can gouge your eye out Right? And you can still have lustful thoughts. You can cut off your hand and still sin. But what Jesus is saying is that whatever causes you to sin, whatever it is that causes you to sin, sin, be willing. Be willing to lose it. Right? Nip it in the bud. You know, at another church that I served at, um, I, I was serving as a youth pastor there. I had one of my students, one of my kids come up to me and give me his iPad. He gave me his iPad and he said, hey, I need you to take this because it's causing me to commit sin in my life. Because I'm looking at things that I should not be looking at on this iPad, so I want you to take it. Right? Some of you think, some of you think, you know, it's just, it's just a video game. It's just a cartoon. Man, I, I don't care what it is. Nowadays, it's just all so bad. I've seen... I've seen some of the cartoons that you guys watch, that, that those Japanese anime. I've seen those video games that you guys play, right? And many of you, while, while you've been playing games and, and watching um, these animations, you, you guys have been doing it like, especially now as you're, as you're stuck at home, you're, you're on house arrest, right, on lockdown, all you guys do is play these video games and, and watch the, these animes. Right? All day, every day as you're stuck. And I want to encourage you, especially now, as you guys are on house arrest, as you guys are, are, are stranded in your rooms on lockdown, I want to encourage you guys as you're stuck at home and you can't get out, please, please be careful. Please be careful in the things that you stumble across and you allow your eyes to see. You guys, do not think that it's okay. Do not think that it's okay to watch those videos because... You are stranded in your room with nothing to do. You know, the world The world is a pretty dark place. And um, this dark world can reach us, even in our rooms, through the lenses of our, of our, of our computer screens and phones. Right? Be careful in the things that you click on. The greatest danger is not persecution from the world. It is seduction, seduction by the world. I read that again. The greatest danger for us as Christians is not persecution from the world, but it's seduction by the world. And even though we can have this tendency to feel safe in our rooms, right? It can actually be the most dangerous place in terms of, of temptation. You know, the reason why the church has so little influence over the world is because the world has so much influence over the church. And Jesus is saying this, hey, cut off the root, nip it in the bud. Don't look, don't do it. Behave as if you've actually cut that body part out. You know, I have a friend, or I used to have a friend on Facebook, but I had to defriend him because he was just putting up all these pictures, right? Um, and, 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 you know, it was just very inappropriate. So, so I defended him, right? We need to be very cautious of the things that we look at. D.A. Carson once said this, We are to deal drastically with sin. We must not pamper it, flirt with it, enjoy nibbling around its edges. We must hate it. We must crush it. Dig it out. 
And, and here's an application for you guys, okay? You know that little, that little, um, that little video camera lens that you guys have? Uh, yeah, I want you guys to look into it right now, right? The ones that you guys use for Zoom or, or Skype or Google Hangouts. Um, I want you guys to look right into it. Yeah, like this. All right, I want you guys to look right into that, okay? Right? Look right into the camera lens. And I want you guys to pretend that Jesus is looking right at you through those lens because Jesus sees it all. I want you guys to even pretend that you're having a, a, a 24-7 Zoom session with Jesus. You know, I was actually going to entitle this sermon, I was going to entitle this message, um, Zooming with Jesus. But, um, yeah, I, I, I decided not, not to go with that. Um, but I thought about it. I thought about it. But because two weeks ago I talked about how anger is, is heart murder. Um, I thought lust being heart adultery would be appropriate. Um, you know, they say that the camera is on all the time. Even when you're sleeping, like the camera is on and that the government can see you. Right? Not only the government, um, but you know, all those websites that you get that you get ads from, that they're able to see you. Right? It's kind of scary when you, when you think about it. Like you're sleeping and then you know they can like kind of see you right through through that camera lens. But that's exactly how it is with God. He sees you all the time. He sees you all the time. And I want you to look at that camera right now. I want you to look at that camera. Take your eyes off of the screen. Take your eyes off of me and put them on that camera. And I want to tell you that God's eyes are always on you. That he sees you. And, and, and man, I'm, I'm even speaking to myself. You know, we are called to always have our eyes fixed upon God. And this is what I was talking about. With our, with our theme for 2020, spiritual vision, right? Um, spiritual um, vision, 2020 vision. But even when you take your eyes off of God, I want to remind you that His eyes are still on you. He sees you. His eyes are always on you because He cares for you and He loves you. God does not want us to ruin our lives in Kahina. Remember two weeks ago, I shared that with you. You guys, and that's what sin does. It, it ruins our lives, and God does not want us to do that to ourselves. Do you guys know how an Eskimo kills a wolf? What the Eskimo will do is, is he'll put the sword in the in the snow, sword, sword, right? And the sword in the in the snow with the blade up, and he'll put some animal blood on it, and it'll freeze. And then the, the wolf will come along. He he'll smell the wolf will smell the the blood on the blade. And you'll begin to, to, to lick it, right? And he keeps licking and licking because it tastes so good. Um, and he's licking and he doesn't even know that the blood that he's tasting is his own blood, right? That he's licking his own blood. And eventually he'll bleed to death. You know, we pleasure our sinful desires of the flesh. And all it does is ruin us, Right? That is what sin and its temptation is. We think we think that we're we're compromising our relationship with God for something better, right? But you know, there isn't a single person, there isn't a single person in the history of this world that has made this exchange and has been better for it. There isn't a single person that's made this exchange and and and, and is thankful for it, right? It always leads to remorse. And to regret. I have yet to meet a person. I have yet to meet a single person that has said, I have found something better than what God has to offer me. Right? Back then, uh, a man could say, well, I can, I can get a divorce with my wife now and, and remarry another woman. Right? Um, and that would not be considered sinning. Okay? Anything was legitimate grounds for the man to divorce his wife. Right? Even if they found another woman that was more attractive, they found another woman more attractive, right? That was legitimate grounds for them to divorce their present current wife. All they needed was to give their wife a certificate of divorce. But here Jesus says, You have heard that it was said to give a certificate of divorce, but I say to you 
that the only legitimate grounds is adultery. And this passage that, that Josh read goes on to divorce in verses 31 and 32. Matthew 5, verses 31 to 32, says, It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So once again, he, he, he puts this, on the man, and you know, I know that divorce is is a sensitive topic um, for for many people, um, and this is why this is a very difficult passage to speak on. Um, but I do want to touch on this with sensitivity, because of the significance that it has to do with the first part. This does not cover the whole teaching um, on a marriage and divorce, but is rather a brief summary of the whole teaching that is to come in Matthew chapter nineteen. Right, so this is just kind of like a, a glimpse. Okay, it's like a little, um, like a little trailer, right? Um, a little teaser. Okay, it's it's just a it's to foreshadow, right? Um, in nineteen verse seven, the Pharisees come up to Jesus and they say, "Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away?" And Jesus replies, "Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives." But from the beginning, it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except on the grounds for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. When Jesus says from the beginning, he's talking about when God created Adam and Eve. Right? Once again, it was for a covenant relationship. Everyone say covenant. Right? Where two become one. Genesis 1.24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. God's commands are designed to guide you to life's best. Right? This is a perfect example of that. What happens if you if you break the command and you commit adultery? It ruins your life. Right? It puts you in Gehenna. The love relationship is ruptured between husband and wife. Trust is gone, right? Hurt sets in. Guilt and bitterness creep in, right? Scars severely limit the future dimensions of love you could have experienced together. Oftentimes, it can lead to divorce. We're not just a couple is affected. It's no longer the, the husband and wife that's affected, but the children as well. Right? The children are deeply hurt and affected. God intended a sexual relationship for good. That was God's intention, right? Between man and woman, husband and wife, right? It, it was for, 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 for pleasure and to produce offspring between husband and wife. But sin messed that up. And now look what has happened. We see prostitution all over the world. Did you guys know that human trafficking is is at an all-time high? And they say that that the OC area, Anaheim, right, is one of the prominent areas that it's happening. Where do you think they get their support? You know where they get their support? They get their support from pornography, from porn. And here some of you think, you know what, it's just porn, right? Everyone's doing it. No, no, it's it's sin. Right? It's sin, and that sin is affecting many, many people. It's affecting people you know, people you don't know, and it's affecting you. It affects your relationship with your future wife, your future husband, and most importantly, most importantly, it affects your relationship with God. That's what sin does, and that is why God desires to protect us. That's why He has put up these walls. I want to encourage you as you spend much time at home. You know, I know there's there's a temptation to play with fire, right? But here's another quote that I got that, that I got. Can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his feet? So it is with the man who commits adultery and lust it is heart adultery. Because I want to remind you that lust, 
Number one, it, lust it destroys lives. Two, lust destroys marriages. Three, lust destroys families. And four, lust destroys our relationship with God. Please, please stop seeing your sin as something to be taken lightly. It's not. Don't think that sin is not a big deal because God offers you His grace, right? And there is no sin aside from blasphemy against the Holy Spirit that God cannot pardon. You know, I was talking about this, but nowadays, you know, you hear so many messages on God's grace, right? But we don't hear enough about God's wrath and, and His anger. And today, just even in, in my QT Devos, talking about how God is a jealous God. He's jealous for us that we shouldn't have any idols before Him. We should be worshiping the Creator and not the creation. You know, that God desires to have all of our hearts fully devoted to Him. That, 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 that it breaks God's heart when we sin against Him. Yes, yes, God does love the sinner, but He hates the sin. God hates the sin while He loves the sinner. May we see sin the way he does. Take your sin seriously and cut it out. Cut out whatever it is that you need to cut out. Right? Um, cut it out. Anyways, I'm sorry. Um, let's stop pampering it. Stop flirting with it, nibbling around its edges, but rather let's hate it, crush it, and dig it out. You know, if you are in Christ, um, sin cannot keep you out of heaven right god 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 is is just god full of grace but i do want to tell you and let you know that sin does have its consequences here on earth sin can keep you out of god's best plans for you and sin can send you to gehenna you know if we are in christ sin might not 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 send us to eternal hell but it, it can send us to hell on earth it can send us to gehenna be careful. Be careful in, in, in the way you live your life. Be careful with just with, with you what, what you allow your eyes to see and with your th thoughts. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Reap a character. Sorry, sorry, sow a character, reap a destiny. It starts with a thought, you guys. It starts with a thought. Are we going to look long, longer and desire or do we repulse and look away, running towards Jesus and fixing our eyes on Jesus? Amen, church? I'll give you some differences, differences between love and lust. Love is commendable to the world. Lust is furtive, ashamed, and embarrassed. Love pursues the good of another. With self-control, concern, reason, and patience. Lust pursues its own gratification, impatient of any control, immune to reason. Love thrives on candlelight and conversations. Lust is equally happy in a doorway or a taxi. And its conversation is made of animal grunts and cries. Love is individual. There is only the unique other, the, the one doted upon, the single star around whom the lover revolves. Lust takes whatever comes. Lovers gaze into each other's eyes. Lust looks sideways, inventing deceits and seduction, sizing up opportunities. Love grows with knowledge and time, courtship, truth, and trust. Lust is a trail of clothing in the hallway. Love covers, lust cloys. Love lasts, lust leaves. And from today's passage, I wanna let you know, I wanna tell you that you have a choice to make. You have a decision. You can either choose love or lust. What's it going to be? Jesus says here that even 
even looking at someone lustfully, right? Even just, just, just the, the lust is heart adultery, right? Just, just looking at someone lustfully, you've committed adultery in your heart. Will you choose a temporary pleasure and satisfaction that is fleeting but will ruin our lives? Or will you choose the best that God has in store for you that will last? Let's pray. God, I just want to pray for, for each and every person that, that has heard your word for us today. God, I pray that you would guard our eyes, that you would guard our thoughts. May we not, may we not pamper the, the thoughts in our minds. May we not, may we not play with, with, with temptation. But I pray, I pray that God, we would really just um, cut, cut the root of the sin in our lives. As you tell us, if our eye causes us to sin, to gouge it out. If our hand causes us to sin, to cut it off. God, I pray that we would really just um, be conscious and aware of, of how sin even starts um, in our hearts and that we would really be quick to nip it in the bud, that we would be quick to, to, to cut it off, to cut it off at its roots, oh God, so that we can live lives that are honoring and pleasing and glorifying to you. Father God, I know the situation for many of us where we're stuck at home on lockdown, we're on, we're on house arrest, God, and we get a little antsy and we've got all this pent up, just um, frustration and, and stuff. Um, and, and there's that temptation to, to look at things, watch things that we should not be looking at. Father God, I pray that you would really keep us strong from temptation, God. I pray that it, that it would allow us to come running to you, God. And just remind us that, God, your eyes are, are, are constantly upon us. Um, not to just 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 to find mistakes in us and to, and to, to just rebuke rebuke us and, and, and correct us and, and scold us. But your eyes are, 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 are gazed upon us because you love us so much and you desire to, to protect us because you know the consequence of sin and how much it ruins our lives and, and how much it, it, it destroys us and affects our relationship with you. So Father God, I pray that God, you would help us, God. Help us to say no to, to sin. And God, that we would say yes to you and to your word and to your ways that we would live lives that are honoring, honoring, pleasing, and glorifying to you. Father God, many of us, we made this commitment um, at the end of, of the True Love Wait series. Father God, I pray that you would continue to remind us of that commitment, that covenant that we made. Hold us accountable, oh God. Father God, we desire, God, to be people that live lives that are pleasing and honoring to you that, that we will not follow the patterns of this world, but that we will be set apart, oh God. God, we want to honor you. We want to bring you glory. Help us to do so. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I cast my mind. I cast my mind. To Calvary. Where Jesus bled. And I I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior, that mercy His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down.
Thank you for, for that response song and leading us into a time of worship. I'm going to close us with the benediction. If you guys would just open up your hands with palms up like this. Speaking of the uh, palms, next week, uh, sorry, today is Palm Sunday and next week is, is Easter. Um, and before that, we have Good Friday and Good Friday service will be joined together with, with a KM with our parents so it's going to be family style worship um, we will be taking part in communion together on Good Friday uh, but before that Thursday 9 p.m. we will begin our fast and it will be going on through Friday 9 p.m. so for 24 hours we're going to be fasting and I want to really encourage you guys during that time of fasting to be praying um, against this this coronavirus I've been on my hands and knees and, and man I just really want this to be done and over with and so just join me in prayer let's really pray for this to just come to an end and for God's safety and his protection um, upon you know just um, his people especially those that are that are fighting this on the front lines to those health care workers and let's just yeah, let's just really come together and spend some time praying but also this week as it's Passion Week I want to encourage you guys to really just um, yeah reflect upon Jesus last week um, before he, he, he goes to the cross, before he's nailed to the cross for, for our sins. Um, and we do know that, that the resurrection is coming on Easter Sunday. So um, I'm excited for that message that's going to be next week. Please invite your VIPs to come out. Send them the link um, to hear God's word. And I'm excited. I'm excited for that word. Um, so be on the lookout for that, for that plug, for that video. And um, send it to, to, to a VIP friend. All right. Open up your hands for the benediction. I want to do things a little bit differently today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And all God's people say, amen. THCYG, Home Church YG, love you all.